back. We're live. I'm Jay Fidel. This is Sharon Mori walking next to me. We are host and co-host of Hawaii, the State of Clean Energy, a, a long-running, important program, our flagship program on energy. We do five a week of some kind of aspect of energy. But this is the best one. This is one, the best the one. Wednesday. This is the one that Sharon organizes through the Hawaii <laughs> Energy Policy Forum. And guess what? We have two great guests on by Skype. Uh, we have, of course, Mina Morita, a regular visitor. She's at the Think host Tech. on Kauai. Well, she's our she's our host on Kauai. And uh, we also have Nadine Nakamura, also from Kauai. They are calling in from Kauai. We're going to talk to them about what happened in the 2017 well, and, legislature. And, and Nadine is Representative Nakamura. Yes, right, excuse me. <laughs> so, welcome to the show, Mina Morita, former chair of the PUC and former representative and chair of the Energy Committee of the state legislature for about 27 years. And also <laughs> Representative uh, Nadine, Nadine Nakamura. Nakamura. Welcome to the show. Oh, Hi, and Sharon. Thanks, thanks for letting us broadcast from Kauai this week. It's so nice to be home. <laughs> <laughs> you guys look so comfortable, like relaxing. <laughs> we are. We're actually in Nadine's kitchen. <laughs> Excuse me. We're in Nakamura's kitchen. <laughs> I like the plant. <laughs> the plant's good. Green. <laughs> the plant is thanks to her son. <laughs> he looked at and he said, you need something in the background, and you put the plant there. It's very <laughs> nice. <laughs> so, uh, Mina, can you introduce and properly Representative Nakamura to us? Tell us, uh, you know, her background and her uh, involvement in energy. I'll be really happy to. Uh, so, Representative Nakamura, uh, we have her on the program this week, and it's primarily because of her, her planning background. Um, Representative Nakamura was a planner, a planning consultant before she entered politics. And um, it was in 2010 that she won her county council seat and uh, won that seat for two terms. And then she was asked by Kauai Mayor um, Bernard Cavallo to become his managing director for, for the county. And there had a lot of interaction on transportation issues. But um, right now, Representative Nakamura represents D District 14, which is East and North Kauai. He was elected in 2016. She sits on the Housing, um, Transportation, and Finance Committees. And uh, I, I had a couple of introductory questions for her sure. uh, to <laughs> get a feel of what's happening right now. So you just finished your first year yes. as a state representative. I survived. Well, yeah, you survived. What was the highlight of your first year? The highlight for me, two things. One was just meeting other representatives from all over the state. It was an incredible mm -hmm. experience. 50 other House members representing 1.4 million people around the state of Hawaii. And that, that was a great experience. But also passing my first bill uh -huh. relating to an invasive species on Kauai, uh, the rose ring parakeet. And we were able to uh, get the bill passed and uh, get some attention to this major issue uh, affecting a lot of farmers on this island, uh, the visitor industry, and uh, property managers. Yeah, and, and I think in that one you can see how the economic impact of those birds, because I guess it started out with a couple of pairs in the 1960s, and it's grown to hundreds, Thousands. and attacking yeah. ag crops, and uh, a pest to tourists. They all roost in the coconut trees at the hotels and make a big mess. <laughs> yeah. So, I, you know, this is sort of a process question. So was there anything in the legislative process that you found yourself scratching your head and saying, why is it done this way or why this? <laughs> A lot of times throughout the entire process <laughs> I was doing that. Maybe because uh, you know the, the state process is so different from the county process which is year long mm -hmm. and if you don't finish one week mm -hmm. you, you go to the next week or you put it into committee and you resolve issues. Um, you also vote right in front of the camera every Wednesday. Mm -hmm. um, in the um, state house, uh -huh. um, you know, it's a, it's such a compressed process, and there's not a lot of time for that type of 
peer liberation and and uh, really being able to work a bill and make it improve on it. You just don't have that luxury. Yeah, and I think that's some of the stuff that we want to touch on later on one particular bill. So what do you think was the most important accomplishment um, for the session? Well, um, to me, the social justice legislation mm -hmm. uh, was a huge accomplishment, and it got buried in all of the discussion about rail, mm -hmm. but the uh, passing the earned income, the state earned income tax credit, mm -hmm. um, after 20 years of trying, mm -hmm. yeah, it was great to be able to vote for that bill that gives um, low income wage earners mm -hmm. um, some, some assistance relief. and yeah. relief. Mm -hmm. um, the Promise program that helps uh, community college yeah. students pay for, make their tuition free mm -hmm. is a huge um, program and yeah. happy to support that. And then all of the affordable housing legislation and funding that mm -hmm. will help to build more affordable rental housing in this state mm -hmm. and address the homelessness issue. Okay, great. Thanks. So one of the reasons why we asked you as a guest today is because of your extensive planning background, as I mentioned earlier. And as you well know, transportation, I mean, the traffic, this traffic and affordable housing issues are typically top of mind issues for a lot of people throughout the state. So one of the bills that we were focusing on is um, House Bill 1580. Did I get the number right, Jack? Where have I heard that before? 1580. <laughs> so, which among other things, was supposed to um, set a renewable fuels target uh, for the transportation sector. And, you know, being a member of the Transportation Committee, from your perspective as a planner, can you share any thoughts on that bill? That yeah. you had? Yeah, um, I was uh, able to vote in support of that bill when it reached the Finance Committee. Okay. So I, I think what happened was it was approved in the Energy and Environmental Protection Committee. Right. Um, it was a triple referral, then it went to transportation, then it was, uh, it did not, it was referred out of transportation and okay. then went to finance. Okay. Uh, and um, I believe that it died in conference committee. Yes, it did. Uh huh. Um, I was not on that conference committee, right. but uh, I um, supported it for um, the goal. You know, just being able to set a goal, and I think a lot of um, there may have been some concerns. I was taking a look at some of the testimony, saying that it was a very ambitious goal, mm -hmm. um, but that the uh, the short range goals mm -hmm. of five percent reduction mm -hmm. in fossil fuel use. Mm -hmm. By 2025, um, I think is a good goal to try to achieve. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But um, you know, I know there's a lot of um, new investments to be made uh, in our infrastructure. You know, one being transportation. We're, we're, we're either talking about highways and roads or uh, fuel delivery system. And so as a planner, um, can you give us an idea if there's any magic bullets out there um, in kind of mirroring planning and policy development? Mm -hmm. And just come from a planner's perspective, it's really important to identify the problem. What is it that we are trying to solve? Mm -hmm. And what's not working to get us to achieve whatever goal that we set? And so um, I think in, in this situation, you know, being really clear about, you know, what, having good data that tells us where are we at today and where, how do we get to the future? Mm -hmm. And in order to do that, what good planners do, I think, is to bring together all of the key stakeholders to collaborate about, you know, once the goal is set, is how are we going to achieve that goal? And I think in this situation where there's changing technologies, there's different, um, you can't work in a silo, you have to collaborate with others mm -hmm. in order to make some of the system changes that are going to be needed. Um, and so by bringing everyone together and coming up with clear strategies that to me makes it easier for policymakers to then and the executive side to then move on it so 
you know, with the legislative session, session so short, do you have any suggestions on how we can go about doing that? And I think, I think the work should be done in the interim. Mm -hmm. And I think um, now that the session is over, mm -hmm. it's, you know, trying to find, um, I, I think, you know, 10, 15 years ago when people started convening groups and having um, uh, workshops and groups coming together to talk about energy, renewable energy and how are we going to do it and bringing me people from the mainland, experts, sharing ideas. I think all of that is needed mm -hmm. in this transportation area, especially mm -hmm. with ground transportation. So, uh, you know, I, one of the things, just to, to insert, uh, the Department of Transportation has a sustainable uh, transportation group that includes energy advocates as well as the transportation uh, groups and the uh, private sector and the counties. Uh, and they've been meeting and they, it seems that the transportation and energy folks don't quite seem to have a common sort of way to go forward. And I just wondered in the session whether you saw any common threads or something that, you know, we could start building on as we go forward because we certainly know and all of us want to, to get to clean transportation. It's a matter of what is the, the right pathway or pathways. And, uh, you know, when they come before you in the session, they may be giving you some pearls that maybe we can kind of assemble as we go forward so we don't lose uh, the last three months of, of work uh, that was put into that. Well, you know, this HB 1580 didn't make it to the Transportation Committee. Oh. So the first I heard of it was really on the, uh, at, as a member of the Finance Committee. So maybe that's one area that needs to be worked on. Um, and it may have been, because there's a triple referral, for the time consideration that, yeah. that make it difficult to sometimes get through the process. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you know, the other thing that I wanted to bring up was uh, Representative Nakamura was sort of inter instrumental in the county efforts to relook at uh, multimodal issues. So can you tell us how you, uh, how the Kauai County um, sort of formulated their discussion on moving toward uh, multimodal solutions? Yeah, I think we had. Um, hey, Nagy, can you hold a minute? We just want to take a short break. We're about the middle way through our show. Uh, that's uh, Representative Nadine Nakamura, Mina Morita, former uh, chair of the PUC, Sharon Moriwaki, my co-host. I'm going to take a short break. We come back, and in the last half, I'd like to cover the question about how this session, the things you saw in the legislature, how they how they affect the the initiative in general, how they affect um, you know the the speed and the uh, effectiveness of the Clean Energy Initiative and how they affect public opinion. Um, so we can cover that too right after this break. We'll be right back. Aloha, I'm Kawi Lucas, host of Hawaii is my mainland every Friday at 3 p.m. on Think Tech Hawaii. We talk about things of interest to those of us who live here and my past blogs can be found at kawilucas.com. Okay, I didn't listen. We're back. We're live here in Hawaii, the state of clean energy, with Representative Nadine Nakamura and Mina Morita in Kauai, joining us by Skype, and Sharon Moriwaki, my co-host here in Honolulu. Wow, what a crowd. <laughs> okay, so you had asked about uh, uh, life in the county of Kauai, and uh, I'm sure interested in hearing Nadine's answer to that. Yeah, what, what I was asking uh, Representative Nakamura was, uh, you know, as a managing director under America Bayo, she was pretty instrumental in getting the county to look at um, different kinds of partnerships in developing the, the county's multimodal policy. So 
representative, can you tell us how sure. you did it? Actually, um, but while I was on the council, uh, there was a very strong advocate for multimodal land transportation planning, and that was Joanne Yukimura, Council mm -hmm. Member Joanne Yukimura. And she has um, was able to secure funding, secure a consult, uh, the administration secured a consultant, and uh, they created a. I think the first one in the state is a multi multimodal land transportation plan mm -hmm. that uh, we uh, we use as a model moving forward, mm -hmm. and that involves looking at uh, roads, bicycle paths. Uh, pedestrian paths, as well as the bus system, to really look at it um, holistically together, because a lot of times it's done separately. And uh, so that's something that uh, the mayor has uh, really promoted. We have a complete street uh, policy, we have safe routes to school policy, and we have a transportation planner focused on implementing these policies. Okay. So that's that's how you translate the plans into action. Mm -hmm. and, so, um, Dean, if I could insert, so lessons learned from the county in how you did that and what were the major pieces, the foundational pieces, uh, can that be transferred to the state and what kind of policy would need to be in place that you know we could build upon? I think as you said earlier, um, the EGA administration is working to coordinate um, better with the counties and to, uh, I think, you know, having the, the policies in place, the complete street policies, safe routes to school policies, having, um, maybe we need a multimodal land transportation policy mm -hmm. that uh, brings it together. Mm -hmm. um, but I think the State Department of Transportation is and under the leadership of uh, Director um, Fujigami, yeah. uh, there, there is movement to learn from what others are doing on the mainland, even learning from what's happening on Kauai, um, and training their staff to think about transportation differently. And it's not, um, as they're saying now, it's not just about moving cars from one place to another. It's, mm -hmm. it's um, you know, moving people. Mm -hmm. to where they need to get to go and it might not just be by vehicles mm -hmm. so that's where that's the that's the shift that needs to happen mm -hmm. and it needs to be ingrained in the bureaucracy okay. so how mm -hmm. uh, you know um, you had mentioned that there was a champion in the council in recognizing the need for good planning Do you see the same kind of effort at the legislature recognizing the need for, for good money? Um, you know, it's my first year, and I'm still trying to figure that out. <laughs> um, I, um, you know, there was so much uh, focus on rail this session yeah. that um, I did not get a sense of the other types of multimodal. Mm -hmm. I mean, rail is one big part of it, and it will mm -hmm. make a huge difference in Honolulu. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, you know, we need to we need to be looking and coordinating. And a lot of it, too, is is um, implementation. Yeah. So do you think that we don't get involved in? Right. But do you think the department has enough resources to make these huge, um, to implement policy? Yeah. I, oh, I, I guess the question is, do you think or in your first year, have you seen if our transportation policies and objectives are clear enough in moving forward to give good direction to the Department of Transportation? Um, I really don't have a I I really don't have a strong sense of mm -hmm. um, being able. I don't feel like I can answer that question. I think mm -hmm. I'm still learning, um, and I. I think I need to do more research in that area. I, um, mm -hmm. I don't know if there's a disconnect yet. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Do you have any questions for representative? Yeah. Oh yeah. I yeah. So uh, you know we we've, we've had a problem in 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 moving ahead. 
Uh, we were under the shadow of uh, this BUC proceeding um, it was through 20, 2015 it's, it's, and 16. 16 for 18 months, 19 months, and, and, and that cast a shadow during that whole period and then after it. Uh, and then we have right now, we have uh, the, uh, uh, you know, the, the whole affair in, in the <laughs> legislature about confirming uh, oh, Tom Gorak. The PUC is you know, in a state of turmoil, I would say. Um, <clears throat> have they appointed anybody instead? No, not yet. So the PUC is in turmoil, okay? And the industry is in turmoil. The installers are, you know, are declining, and there's, there's hardly any left already. And uh, the incentives that, were, that existed before don't exist anymore, and the public is not enthusiastic about doing any more uh, PV. Uh, only, actually, the only place that's going well is in Kauai. <laughs> but, but, you know, <clears throat> so the legislature, you know, by default, because the governor is not involved in this stuff. I mean, he's made some negative pronouncements about uh, Nextera and about LNG, but he hasn't actually come up with a positive plan himself or through DBET. So, you know, it's just like this, none of the government is actually um, moving ahead right now. And then we have, then we have the 2017 legislature, which was in many respects a failure around around you know all issues, but um, especially a failure around energy because they were two obvious things uh, that I think they should have done, could have done, and there were a lot of things they should have done that, that didn't come up. Um, so here we are, and my question to Representative Nakamura is what should the public think? Should they be excited about energy right now? Uh, should, they be, should they feel that it's all moving along nicely? Uh, should they be concerned? Should they be writing letters to their representatives and senators saying, K PASA, what's going on? Uh, what do you guys plan to do next year, the election year? You know, at the end of the cycle, it all, it all starts again. It's like the myths of Sisyphus, you know, you keep pushing the stone up the hill and it rolls right back down on you. So where's the progress? How, how committed is the legislature and the leadership in the legislature to doing something? How do you feel? I wish I were, you know, in your place. I would, I would really, you know, know more about this. But I'm wondering how you feel about, you know, the leadership, the initiative going forward, and mostly how the public should, should respond or react to this. Or give us some hope. Give us some <laughs> <For> hope. next <laughs> session. I, I think um, there's a leader in the house. I think um, that um, I think clean energy policy will, will be. Um, I I'm hopeful. Uh, I think uh, I think it's important that uh, everyone get involved in um, trying to uh, promote um, multimodal land transportation solutions. Um, I think we we. You know, on Kauai, there's been, um, it takes, it's the leadership, though, that makes it happen. And I think Mayor Carvalho has made it a priority to implement complete, complete streets, to implement suit routes, to, to um, um, and, but we need that at the state level. We yeah. need to, I, I, I think, you know, I'm going to push back a little bit on you, Jay, <laughs> because I don't think, you know, everything is in disarray. And and I think, you know, the policies are there. A lot of it is dependent on the electric utilities. I mean, we've made really, really great strides in moving forward. And I think, you know, when you talk about rooftop solar, we've got to deal with cost and physics here. You know, we're, we're at the limits. You know, we push the system, we push the old system as far as it can go. And um, so, and and you see exponential growth in rooftop solar. You know, we can't live with exponential growth. It has to end at some time, you know, and the time came sooner. Mm -hmm. it, ha it had to happen. <laughs> but again, we're only serving 25% of the HECO customers with rooftop solar. It's about designing a system for the other 75%. And, and you know, how do we move forward there? I'm kind of disappointed the legislature that they didn't address the renewable energy income tax credits to make it more equitable. I mean, there really is a question of whether it should be subsidized. I, 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 I'm concerned about GENs being used as a rebate rather than a loan program. 
you know, again, that's another equity issue. So I'm glad. I'm glad a lot of the bills that <laughs> were before the Energy Committee didn't pass Inaction because for a, lot of, <laughs> a lot of social equity um, issues tied around there. But I think overall, in general, we've been making some pretty great strides still. You know, we're really capturing all the low-hanging fruit. It's, okay, it's, well, let me, let me, uh, we're getting to the end of our time, and Nadine, I wonder if you could uh, flesh out a little bit of what you were saying about people getting involved. Could you sort of direct your comments to them and tell them what specifically they should be doing in order to move the ball ahead? Well, uh, and I think in general, in interacting with the legislature. Well, I, I, transportation is one. I mean, I, I feel that transportation, uh, Clean transportation. We, we haven't taken the low-hanging fruit. We haven't done anything. Sorry, uh, that's just me. But, uh, and, and it's really, really too bad that 1580 disappeared in conference. There was no good reason for that. It seemed to me it was a good bill, and it's really sad that we don't even have a, a target, uh, not even an aspirational goal right now. It's hard to, it's hard to build on, uh, you know, that failure. So I guess, you know, what, what should people be thinking and doing? How should they get involved? What should the public and the electorate do in order to participate in this conversation and this building this initiative to a head of steam? I think similar to the renewable energy initiatives, it's having some entity to convene the different stakeholders. I don't know if you need a bill in order to convene people to have the conversation. Um, and, you know, whether it's, you know, people in the legislature convening it or on Hawaii, it was the Kauai Economic Development Board that initiated many annual conferences and brought hundreds of people together. Um, every year, and they continue to do that um, around around renewable energy. So why can't we do that with, you know, transportation um, in the transportation right. area? And, and, and I think you know again we go back to the importance of the Hawaii Energy Policy Forum when it started up mm -hmm. 20 years ago, 15 years. How many years, Sharon? 15, 15 years. Well, yeah. You know, I think of the Energy yeah. Policy Forum in the context that. Sharon Moriwaki and many meetings of the Energy Policy Forum over the past five years, if not longer, have been dedicated, mm, you know, with, with, yeah, with a real heart, you know, with real large effort to try to get something going on transportation. But I would say right now that we have not been able to do that. There's been no action on transportation, not even an aspirational goal. So, Sharon, we're out of time, oh. and I don't mean to rant on this. <laughs> I'm sorry, you guys. But, Sharon, can you summarize the discussion? Where are we? Where do we go from here? I think, number one, there's hope. There's hope because people are coming together. There's hope because people are concerned that has, things aren't going, and maybe with that, people will come together and find some action that they can work on, and we hope so because we're hoping to focus on clean transportation in August at our Clean Energy Day. Yeah, and Representative Nakamura, I hope you come in August. Yes. And we're with you, and we'd like you to be with us. We'd like to have this conversation with you. Uh, we recognize, uh, you know, uh, we appreciate you coming down and, and being with Mina Marita today and talking with us today. We want to do that again. And thank you, Mina, for setting it up. Uh, this is Hawaii, the state of clean energy, with Representative Nadine Nakamura, with Mina Morita, with Sharon Moriwaki, and me, the old guy. Aloha. Uh, we'll be right back. <laughs> we'll be back next week. We'll be right back. <laughs> yeah, we'll be back with Mina again next week. So stay tuned in.